Take three deep, long in and out breaths. Notice where you feel the breathing. Notice it feels good. If long breathing feels good, keep it up. If not, you can change. You can make the breath shorter, more shallow, heavier, lighter, faster, slower. Try to find a rhythm that the breath feels really good inside. And then maintain that. If the same rhythm keeps on feeling good, stick with it. If after a while it doesn't feel so good anymore, you can change again. Try to keep on top of what the body needs as you settle down. You're providing kind of food for the mind. If the mind is well fed inside, then it doesn't go out feeding on garbage outside. The Buddha says there are actually three kinds of food for the mind. There's contact, like contact of the senses. There's consciousness, which is consciousness at the contact. And then there are intentions. The consciousness and the contact are like the raw ingredients for your food. Your intentions are what you do to fix the food that you actually eat. Sometimes you get bad food. Things that other people do, other people say, are just events outside. But it doesn't necessarily have to make you sick. If you're a really good cook, you can take even rotten ingredients and make them into something good. Think about fish sauce and cheese. They're actually spoiled foods, but they're spoiled in a way that they're really good to eat. On the other hand, if you're not a good cook, you can get really good ingredients and you can make them poisonous. I got a case of food poisoning when I was in Alaska a couple of weeks back. The food was perfectly good, but someone hadn't washed their hands. And so quite a few of us got sick. And this is where a lot of us go through life. There are a lot of good ingredients out there, but the way we fix them turns them into poison for us, and we then complain about our stomach aches and other problems, and place the, the blame outside, when actually a lot of it has to do with our own lack of skill in cooking. So look at your intentions right now. Your intention to stay with the breath is a good intention. It provides a good kind of food for the mind. And as you get a greater sense of well-being inside, you can start thinking about other good intentions. One of the reasons why we have the reflections on goodwill, compassion, empathetic joy, equanimity, each time we meditate as a group, is to remind ourselves that these are the methods for fixing our food well. You engage with other people, you engage with them with goodwill. You have goodwill for yourself, goodwill for them. When you see it that they're suffering or they're doing things that will lead to suffering, you have to have compassion on them. Especially if they're doing things that will lead to suffering. You don't you don't hate them, you don't dislike them. You don't feel resentful. You figure out, okay, what are they doing wrong? Where is their misunderstanding? Try to be helpful to them. The same with people who are doing things that will lead to happiness or are happy already. You're not jealous of them. You have to figure out ways that you can increase their happiness. And as for things you can't control, okay, you learn how to deal with them with equanimity. Just learning how to make these distinctions. It's like knowing that different kinds of food require different kinds of techniques to fix them. So you look at the situation. What kind of situation is there? Is this one that calls for compassion or for empathetic joy, equanimity, goodwill? What's called for? What technique? What intentions are called for? And you try to bring that. Because a lot of us have problems fixing the food of our daily life. We picked up bad habits from the people around us. So the Buddha is basically teaching you new techniques. The things you have to keep in mind. 
actually says that goodwill is a kind of mindfulness and it's something you should resolve on. The resolve there, of course, is the element of intention. And the mindfulness is like remembering a technique that may not come naturally. He never says that goodwill is part of our innate nature. Because it's just as easy for us to feel ill will for other people when they're doing something we don't like as it is to feel goodwill. In fact, it's a lot easier to feel ill will. If you say, well, I basically have goodwill, my nature is to have goodwill, and it's just if people didn't bother me that I'd be able to be in line with my true nature. Well, that, that kind of true nature is worthless. If it depends on conditions outside being a certain way, if it really were your true nature regardless of conditions outside, that's the way your mind would always be. The mind has to be trained in these things, which is why it's a resolve that you have to resolve on. You make up your mind this is when you something you want to pursue, and it's mindfulness, something you keep in mind. So the two types of two ways of fixing food for yourself, working with the breath, working with goodwill and the other sublime attitudes, they help each other along. The better you get at being sensitive to other people's well-being, the more sensitive you're going to be to your own well-being. The less you resent people who are happy, the more you'll be able to enjoy your own happiness. So it's good to know these techniques, so that regardless of what makes contact at the senses, what kind of consciousness arises at the contact, what you're aware of, you're able to make good food out of it. At the very least, it will make you sick. And if you're really good, it'll, make, it'll nourish the mind. The mind will be stronger in all of its good qualities. And it's having this ability to tap into a sense of well-being here that enables you to step back from your old ways. And develop new habits in their place, new ways of fixing the food of your life. So figure out with the breath right now, what would be a sense of well-being in the breath? And wherever it's not up to that sense of well-being, what can you do? How do you show compassion for yourself to make it better? Once it's there, how do you show empathetic joy for yourself by keeping it going? And that's for things you can't change. Say there are certain pains in the body that may be the result of, say, of old injuries or thoughts that are coming up from the past. Treat them with equanimity. You don't have to get involved. You keep staying involved with your new habits, your new techniques. Because all too often, the things that we can't change, those are the ones that we tended to focus on with our old techniques of fixing food for ourselves, and we made ourselves miserable. We wanted things to change, wanted them to change, wanted them to change, and they wouldn't change. We got ourselves all worked up. But if you can make the distinction, okay, these are things that I can change and things, these are things that I can't, let the things that you can't change just be. And focus all your energy on making the things you can change as good as possible. It's like a good cook who gets food that's partly spoiled. The cook cuts away the parts that are spoiled. They can make good food out of the remainder. So you're learning how to be a good cook for your own life. both in the practice of breath meditation and the practice of the sublime attitudes. These two practices help each other along, and they expand your repertoire as a cook. The larger your repertoire of skills, the more you'll be able to deal with whatever comes up. You won't poison your own mind, you won't poison the minds of other people. And you find that as a mind grows stronger, you can be in any situation without having to suffer. That's what the Buddhist skill is all about. <laughs>